Hey guys, today we're going to go over our annotations for The Last Dog by Katherine Patterson. So let's begin on our first page. So I have Brock as our main character and he's a dynamic character, which means he's going to undergo some type of change in our story. I have they eat freeze-dried food and must put on a spacesuit to leave. So this is going to be a um, reference to like what it is to be in space. So Earth's atmosphere has now become almost like it is to be an astronaut. And then we put value on exploration and finding things out for oneself. So the main point of the story is to put value on exploration and finding things out for yourself. And it's also a science fiction story. I went ahead and highlighted the words external travel, outside the dome, prescribed dry suit with helmet, because those are going to back up the fact that Earth is now like being on in outer space. So we know our setting is the future. It's a dome on Earth. Our life is regimented, futuristic, and sterile. Life um, directed and controlled by computers. And this first page is the exposition of our story. This is where we're introduced to our basic problem, our characters, and our setting. From there, I'm going to move up a little bit, and you guys are going to be able to see that it is similar to being inside of a spaceship when they also have drinks sparingly and water supply is limited. Those are letting you know that everything is controlled in this environment, including what they're eating and drinking. And then I have it emphasizes the importance of empathy and connection with other living things. So another big thing in the story is they want you to understand that how important it is to be able to connect with other living things, whether it be a person or a pet. All right, we're going to 184. On 184, I highlighted paragraph number 13. I highlighted paragraph number 13 because in this paragraph, so if you guys look, you will be able to see that paragraph 13 is highlighted. It's highlighted because this is where our rising action begins in our story. So we have the gate slid open. Before he was quite ready for it, Brock found himself outside the protection of the dome. This is the first event that's going to lead to a series of events that's causing the problem. Then we have challenge for being outside the dome or challenges for being outside the dome are going to be listed in this paragraph. We're going to move on to our next page, page 185, and on page 185, I highlighted no one to blame but himself, little scary, felt, uh, feels hollow, hungry for something, a food pellet, or even a virtual experience could satisfy. Those are all going to lead to part of our internal conflict. So your internal conflict here is Brock's struggle with feeling differently from others and the loneliness that results from being different. The external conflict is involves the adventure that's outside world and whatever he will survive. We also have several allusions in this paragraph. When they refer to another work of literature like Huck Finn or M.C. Higgins the Great, that's going to go back to an allusion to literature or where you reference another work of literature, song, poetry, anything like that in what you're reading or writing. If we continue on, I have the word loneliness highlighted in paragraph 19, and that's internal and external conflicts deal with Brock's desire for adventure. So his internal conflict is going to basically lead to his external conflict. And I put that in our next note. It says his internal conflict of wanting to go outside will lead to external conflict. Also underline the words podmaster and actual adventure. These are coins are terms coined by the author. So these are things that she made up to make this feel more futuristic. On page 186, where this is our rising action is continued in our story. And so you guys will see that I highlighted, he didn't want anyone accusing him of losing his scientific object, uh, objectivity. This one's important because it lets you know that he's Bat, he's still worried about being considered a deviant. So even though he's curious about the outside world, he still only knows life inside the dome. So he's worried about what others will think of him. On 187, you guys can see that I highlighted paragraph 31. This one's important because it talks about the future, futuristic way children are born, and it gets rid of the traditional family unit. So here, everyone's born like in a laboratory. And then if you look in paragraph 32, we have dogs referenced, Lassie, Toto, and Sounder. Those are all dogs that are in works of literature. So again, we have an allusion to famous works of literature where another work of literature is referenced.
All right, then I have paragraph on the next page. I have a short declarative sentences on this page. Give a cold official tone. So our short declarative sentences are going to give a cold and official tone, like when he says the word affirmative. And then we have longer sentences here, and these longer sentences describe the interaction between Brock and the dog, and they provide a warmer and more human tone. So he's not being short and direct. He's being a little bit more loving and caring, more human-like. All right, on our next page, you guys will see at the bottom, I have originally omits the finding of the dog. So on page 189, when they ask him what he found and they tell him he's late, he only admits to pulling a leaf. He does not originally admit to finding Brog until they tell him that they found another warm-blooded animal or presence. <sighs> Here on page 65, this is important because we have the words canos familiaris or all these Latin words. This is going to be how scientists react to the dog. And we also have the scientific um, terminology for the dog. And so this is important because this is how scientists from around the world classify animals. It's a system that allows everyone to use the same language. Then we have details about Brog's desire to please Brock. So here on this page, we learn how the dog wants to please Brock, his owner. And we have Brock's feelings towards the dog and the fact that he hugged her suggests that Brock's internal conflict with loneliness is in the process of being resolved. So I highlighted for the sight of her drooping ears and tail, her mournful eyes was so dear to him that did what Travis Coates had done in Own Yeller. Remember, that's another allusion to literature. He hugged her. He simply put his arms around her and held her to his chest while she beat him with her tail and licked his face. On 192, I went to the towards the bottom, and again, I have scientific names or a common system for naming organisms, and they're used by scientists around the world. And then the first word is the genus, and the second word is considered the species. Then on 193, I have our plot development is really starting to begin here. We have Brock pinched Brog's neck as hard as he could. Nothing. He pinched again harder. Brog just snuggled closer. So this is heightened tension, and it moves the conflicts towards the con uh, the conflict towards the climax. We have Brock brought his food down on Brog's paw. A tiny yip was all he got from his cruel effort. So each failed attempt is going to add to the tension and heighten suspense. And then I have, that was when he got the great idea. So this complicates the plot. And then we have our climax. Brock turned and bit Brog on the tail so hard that blood started. Brog, surprised and enraged, spun around and bit Brock on the nose. And then our last page, we have... After the climax, the conflict lessens in intensity and moves towards the resolution. So now we have our falling action. And the main character takes a risk of exploring outside the safety of his known world. And we can also look in paragraph 94. Could it be that the fear had kept the dome dwellers prisoner? So we, we know here that the dome dwellers have possibly not left due to the fear of the unknown. And then at the very bottom, we have our resolution. What happens? They stepped out uh, at the brook where they met, and both of them had a long drink. Brock no longer carried a scanner, but he knew what he felt was excitement. The water was delicious. All right, from there, we're going to have our comprehension check. First one, where does Brock live? Inside the dome in a manufactured world. Then we have, what do people believe about the world outside the dome? It's uninhabitable. That would be your correct answer for that one. And then number three, what does Brock discover about the world outside the dome? It contains living things like trees, grass, and a dog, and it is not uninhabitable. So people can actually live there. And then the last one is number four. It says, confirm your understanding of the text by writing a brief plot summary. Your summary should include only the most important events. I am not giving you this summary. I'm expecting you to do this one independently. I hope this helps. Let me know if you guys have any questions and have a great day.